launching angle to screen. Or I think it's Sonia on a screen. I think I'm going to shift. All right. How are you? I didn't. Thanks for coming. Three years. Thanks. Are we broadcasting? We are. I just turned on audio and video. Do we have can, uh, pause for now. Do we have Councilor Berthsall with us? Don't think so. No. Can we text her and make sure she's zooming back in? Can you text her? She was just with us a second ago. Yeah, I got it. Yes, sir. Okay, there she is. Okay, great. Thank you. All right, so the roll call we took um, prior to the start of our executive session, the other room showed that all councilors were present. Uh, Councilor Berksell is joining us remotely, as you can see in our on our TV screens. Uh, thank you for joining these um, special town council and council committee meetings, Monday, August 26, 2024. Um, we are now, I've declared that we're done with our item two executive session and we're moving on to item, directly on to item three agenda review. Can I get a motion uh, around an executive session for the end of our meeting? I would like to move that we have an executive session at the end of the meeting. Pursuant to one MRSA, yes. oral section, did I hear you say that? Section 405, 60? Oh, yeah, I said all of yeah. yeah. So we'll have an executive session. Can I have a second? Second. Okay. Uh, Councilor Berthesol, we're going to start with you every time we vote, okay? Uh, so, Councilor Berthesol? In favor. Councilor Baker? Yep. Councilor Laraway? In favor. Councilor Demerits, in favor. <laughs> Councilor Marks? In favor. Councilor Powers? In favor. Councilor Kenny? In favor. Okay. Um, so that's that's um, adding an executive session to the end of our agenda uh, this evening. And we will also a motion to move order 24171 to the end of our end of our meeting after that executive session. So moved. Seconded. Moved and seconded. And Council Berthsell. Sorry, I faded out for just one second. Can you repeat the question? We, we are voting to move order 24171 uh, to the table to the end of the meeting. Great. In favor. Yep. In favor. Council Baker. In favor. Council Laraway. In favor. Council Demerits. In favor. Council Marks. In favor. Councilor Powers. In favor. Council Kenny. In favor. Excellent. That moves that to the end of the session. Um, the one thing um, we did not have on our agenda that I just wanted to bring up, and that we could probably talk about it informally at the end. Is um, future items, item, items of concern. Does anyone want to, do people feel that we need to have that at the end of the meeting is a formal item? Do the special meetings. Yes. We can, we, we don't can. typically, but. It doesn't hurt. Doesn't hurt. Sure. All right, so Councilor Baker, uh, Councilor Larway, uh, Kenny, is that a motion? That's a motion. Yes. Councilor Kenny moves that we add a uh, future item, uh, items of concerns to the end of our agenda. I have a second. When you say end, do you mean before the executive session? I mean before public comment. So um, public, uh, we'd have that between after the town manager update and before public comment. And then we'd go in after public comment. We'd send everybody home and we'd go back to our executive session. Can I move that we do that as a standing thing? Or? We can. We need to do it as a standing thing. So we'll uh, start adding it as a standing right. thing, I think. Okay. Second. Second. Okay. Councilor Berthesel. Did we lose you? In favor. Sorry, my uh, I'm a little laggy at the moment. In favor. Uh, uh, Councilor Baker. In favor. Councilor Larway. In favor. Councilor Demaris. In favor. Councilor Marks. In favor. Councilor Powers. In favor. Councilor Kenny. In favor. Okay, so we'll do that um, after item ten. Um, I'm concerned. Okay, and then the executive session will be after public comment and before we adjourn. But we'll have something to vote on when we come back into executive session. So we'll have to just make people aware of that. We're going to take public comment in a moment. We'll take anything else under agenda review? Yes. Uh, you need to also get a motion to move forward to 24 Okay. So moved, please. 
Council Larway moved it. Councilor Powers seconded it, I think. That was me. Oh, okay, Councilor yeah. Kenny seconded. Councilor Larway moved it. And Councilor Bretzel, where, are you in favor of moving Order 24-161 to the end of our agenda? Yes, I am. Okay. Councilor Baker? Yes. Councilor Larway? In favor. Councilor Demaris in favor. Councilor Marks? In favor. Councilor Powers favor. and Councilor Kenny? Yes. Okay, great. Anything else under agenda review? Close agenda review and we'll move to public comments. Uh, public comments are time for um, foreign residents to um, speak to us about any item that is not on the agenda. And we ask that uh, as part of our policy that we not talk about employees of the town of Orono specifically, though you're certainly free to talk about the departments and operations of the town of Orono. And you can talk about us all you want as well. Yes, us being the council. Again, do you want to introduce yourself and? Thank you. Thank you. All right, this looks lovely. I can, that screen over there. Um, it's nice up there, but it's nice down here too. Yes. Thank you very much. Can we get your first name and last name just so the people watching at home? I'm Daniel LaPointe, running for House District 24, GOP guy. And uh, I don't like taxes. You okay. know, the highest mill rate going, just about. Come on, guys. Can't miss that picture. Um, I have a question here now. I'm looking at this special uh, council meeting. And in here, there is actually two meetings in one, okay? My concern is that is um, why is, is we're a little concerned that, you know, sometimes the authorities under administrative are not necessarily under our, with our property rights. So, you know, why? Okay, why, why two of these things? And um, I'm going to talk a little bit about something that's very near and dear to my heart. Return my properties. Do you hear that? Return my properties. Under the color of law, you have acted administratively. Let's talk about administratively. There was an original constitution. Then back about 1844, uh, they passed another constitution, which was called the second constitution, if you will, or, or the uh, administrative constitution. In that, um, let's see if I can see my notes here. The, um, the words which change in the second constitution. So much of what you do today with the UN and all of that and, and this comprehensive plans and everything is administrative. And it comes straight from the legislature. They operate in that. But you have to understand you have been served. I served you. We served the governor of the state of Maine back in 2013. And that was Governor LePage. And we asked them for the original constitution to be adhered to. He did sign that. And we went and served every single head of the legislative body. We were headed out. To, it took several hours to talk uh, with the governor about this. We did it under a remonstrance. Now they tried to do something and take uh, Trump off the ballot, but they didn't do it correctly. So the governor LePage did sign that. And so it affects has law that the original constitution is what we need to adhere to. Now the constitution is not self-enforcing. We have to speak about it for it to be a reality. So hence I'm here. We, we went immediately from the governor's office and he signed a directive to the then AG Janet Mills to behave and to act accordingly. And so she had a double service. She had us and she had the governor to obey the original constitution. All she had to do was go to the DA and say, do it. She did not. It went in the wastebasket as did the rest of the democratic control legislature at that time. Shortly thereafter, 2013, I came here with a very special remonstrance, the very same thing, and I served you folks. And the attorney for you at that time was Aaron Fry, who is now, we know Dan Mills is the governor. We know that Aaron Fry is the AG. We know that maybe, um, Anyway, there was no answer on your part. So it stands, okay? So the original constitution, that's common law. That's what we need to be done with here. 
And the issue is administratively, you are acting under the color of uh, uh, the title or the color of law when you deal with my recycling and the fact of my access, my property, your police department misbehaves. I'm, I'm talking as a friend. Sure. I'm talking to you because I think you guys have done a great job. It's not yours, but you have a lot of influences that I think mis that mislead you. But the issue is at this time that I'm very much a friend, all of you. I'm coming forward and I'm asking you, the long-term citizen, now one of the chairs here, Mr. Perry said, you are important to this community and we want you here. We'll do every effort possible to have you here. Well, I have some difficulties. So I'd like to resolve this within the week, the next couple of days, let's talk about it. Let's do something. I want some action with immediacy. Let's come the next time around. That license is mine. The idea that the permit is mine. Your people are misbehaving under the color of law. Now, it isn't just you. But yeah, it, you have five minute limit on public okay, comment. You're I'll coming up close up. Yep. Thank you so very much. Sure. So the probate system has been in fraud for 56 years. The AGs and the DHHS has been taken to task and fined like $4 million back in the early um, 1990s. And the thing is that they're misbehaving yet again. There's no small thing on this. And it has to do with the difference between administratively, common law, which constitution are you under? And are they, they are truly operating under the color of law, which means fraud. And so my point is that in great friendship, open this door up, I've been here before and I received nothing, but you got rid of the skelly wag that was causing all the trouble. And I, oh my God, I think you guys did a great job. I'm so happy to see you, sir. Yep. Yes. And all right, well, thank you, Dan. Yep. Thank, thank you for listening yep. to me. My, my licensing, my standing as, as an here in, in, in the Bible, it says that this property is real. Okay, this is mine. I'm standing in front of you and I'm, I'm saying to you, that's Isaiah 60, and what is it, uh, uh, 13, 14, and 15 said it very clear, the property's mine, you come and let's talk and let's see where we can come together because I don't want any harm here. Okay. I don't want any bill to right. go to some lady that's on social security trying to make ends meet. All right, thank thank you. you. Okay, is there any other public comment? Thank you, Dan. Hi, Mike. Yes, please introduce yourself and I uh, welcome. Carolyn Farnsworth, I am now the owner of Pat's Pizza. And I wanted to just speak about the Route 2 controversy, if that's what you want to call it. Um, one, of the, one of the things that worried me is the parking. Now, if any of you knew my husband, he was the man in the town of Orono that fought for parking constantly. And with the businesses that we have downtown, this literally is downtown Orno, what you see out these windows and you make a turn down Mill Street and you see those shops and that is our town. That is our little downtown. And when it was brought to my attention about redoing the road and doing circles and all these kinds of things, it kind of bothered me when I was looking at the plans on your website about parallel parking on Mill Street. Um, it's my understanding perhaps that's gone away, hopefully, um, because it just would not be practical in any way, shape, or form. Um, and also the thoughts of Pine Street being one way. Um, I drive a 36-foot RV, and negotiating corners and being able to go down Pine Street with a big tractor-trailer truck from main distributors bringing my Bud Light, Michelob Light, and all the good stuff. Um, <laughs> You know, I, I don't understand how that would all work. So that was my my big my big problem when I was looking at that. I totally understand the town of Orno has got a huge traffic issue. I mean, when the college is here, it's unbelievable. In the summertime, it's wonderful. When you come off Forest Avenue and Bennett Road, you know, I mean, all you have to do is yield 
you look real quick and then you're right out on Main Street. So it is a, a seasonal kind of thing um, with the traffic. And, and I, I totally understand that something needs to be done, but I really don't feel that the plans that I looked at were really all that well-laid plans. Um, I did see like Woodman's, I don't know how to read blueprints, but I saw like a red dotted line through his deck. So I don't know if that proposal was going to take some of his deck to be able to make that new traffic flow. I don't, I don't know how to read it, but I'm thinking red is bad. <laughs> so that's kind of what I assumed. Um, so anyway, that was, that's why I'm here. That's my concern. I'm bearing my husband's cross that I want to fight for parking for all of our biz downtown businesses. I have wonderful new um, lady next door that's putting in a bakery and she has nutritional drinks and she's the most wonderful tenant. She's been there a very short time, but coming in and to parallel park to run in and get a cup of coffee and a muffin, just, it, it's just not... And I, and I went online and there is such a thing as parallel phobia, <laughs> the fear of parallel parking. So that being said, uh, I just wanted, you know, it to be heard. And the other thing that I wanted to comment on, uh, and I, I spoke to the, our new town manager, and I would like to see from the police department, and I don't know if this is something that can happen, but years ago, there was always a police officer that would just walk around and just check on us, not just pads. I mean, just, I just, I would love to see kind of that go back in time, kind of an old little downtown. I mean, we're, we're just, I don't even know how many square feet we are in the downtown, but just to have, I don't know any of the police officers anymore. We all used to know them by their name and they knew us and they would come in and just come in the front door and just poke their way through and say hi to people and go out the back door and just kind of make themselves known. And I really would love to see something like that come back. And I know um, Ed, I think it was last name, no, Paul, uh, came by and talked to me and I was, uh, I was shocked when he introduced himself and he said, you know what, I would like to talk to you. And I said, really? I said, really? And so I said, let's go out on the sidewalk. Let's go walking. So he and I were walking around. And I just, I was very thrilled to think that it's the little town feeling again and that people are coming out and they're asking and they're coming to the, the shop owners. And it's the people that, that really, we, we just feel like we need that input. But sometimes coming to a council meeting is always necessarily able to do that. So that was just what I would like to say. Well, I appreciate you being here tonight. Um, we are gonna um, we are talking we, we are talking about kind of uh, let you off the hook a little bit with the items that are on the agenda. But you got started. It's like who am I to stop you, right? So um, <laughs> we're gonna. I'm a force to be reckoned with. <laughs> um, but uh, hopefully a force to be worked with too. So we, we are talking a lot about the two quarter stuff uh, later on this afternoon, and we've heard a lot from the community. So thank you for coming in, and um, you know, we'll members of the public who are with us as we get to that agenda, I will be able to participate in that conversation as well. So, but thank you. Any other public comment? Anybody, any hands raised, Pete? No hands raised at this time. To the, the why two, would you please? Two public comments, two meetings. Why, why two meetings tied into one? Yeah, we're having a committee meeting uh, and discussion workshop and we're all together. We're trying to get together. We're trying to get together two nights a month instead of three or four nights a month. So that's kind of the approach we're taking. So this is succinct town business. Yeah. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Sure. Appreciate you asking. Um, so next on, on the agenda is uh, consent. We'll close the pu uh, public comment. There's another public comment at the end of the meeting. And it's typically our practice. We, we like to hear from people um, who have an interest when we're talking about things on the agenda. Uh, Item five is a consent agenda. It's moved as a single item uh, with no discussion by counselors or members of the public. A member of the council or public can request to have anything moved off the consent agenda. Seeing no movement on that front, we will um, ask for a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented in the agenda. I'll move. Second. Councilor Baker, Councilor Powers. Uh, Councilor Barthesel, we're voting on the consent agenda. How do you In vote? Favor. Councilor Baker. Yes. Councilor Larway. In favor. Councilor Demaris in favor. Councilor Marks in favor. 
Councilor Powers. In favor. Councilor Kenny. In favor. Great. Uh, the consent agenda passes unanimously, so that will change our agenda for our schedule for September, and we will have a new set of meeting times uh, through the end of November. And those are posted with the agenda and will be posted with our council materials. Um, moving into new business, we have um, order number 24-175, an order authorizing the town manager to accept and execute a 50-foot right-of-way easement from, is it Eljandro Alger Strong? What's that? Alejandro. Alejandro Strong, sorry. Um, DBA H. Delaney Properties, LLC, to create a plow turnaround area at the end of Spencer Street in substantially the form as presented. Can I get a motion to put this before us? Second. Moved and seconded. Is there any discussion from the town manager, or the public works department? Or? I mean, this is something that predates me coming, but it's an easement for that road so they can have an appropriate turnaround for plow trucks. Um, my understanding is something that's been worked on for a while. The easement's been reviewed by the attorneys and is ready to be signed. <laughs> so we need your permission to execute. Right. Was this just out of the goodness of his heart? That they, or that, that this, I guess it's... Uh, that one is I'd have to refer, but I do not believe we would... <laughs> Sorry. After, was this just, I, I mean, this company is giving the town an easement, I think, in return for maintaining it? Is that we're going to, yeah, we're, that's my understanding right now. We're going to actually, we're in the process of uh, getting that road up to date and getting it uh, paved. And that was one of the last things we were waiting for. So, well, if you, you look at it, it come and it comes to a dead end, and then it's all dirt. Yeah. We'll actually pave it down in there so we can get the trucks in around, turn around and get yeah. So we'll upgrade it so we can use it for a better purpose. Yeah. And we'll maintain that that section of the road as well. And yeah, we're not going to just keep paving the the, 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 the trail all the way to the school. That is not what I was told. No. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be nice. Okay, so the pavement is just the the part that's marked, the short area marked, and yeah. then the easement is through the open land out between the streets between Westwood and Spencer. We, we plan on keeping everything within the boundaries. We're not going to be expanding it. It's just yeah, not, we can get the trucks in or out. Got it. Thank and the you. trail, um, the trail exists now, right? I mean, I had to get off. Yeah, I think they're times, dealing with that in a separate yeah. issue altogether. Yep. Okay, great. Okay, any other questions? Thank you, Bill. Yep. Um, any other questions? Yep. Um, so we've got a motion in front of us. Uh, Council Berthsel? In favor. Council Baker? Council Arway. Favor. Council Demaris in favor. Council Marks. In favor. Council Powers. In favor. And Council Kenny. In favor. Okay, that's it. Passes seven to zero. And uh, just in case I, I think I neglected to mention it, the consent agenda passed by a vote of seven to zero. And all of the items we took up at the beginning of our meeting, moving agenda items around, creating agenda items, all passed unanimously as well. Um, item 24-176, an order appointing Michael Costello to the Comprehensive Plan Committee. Could we get a motion? Second. So moved and seconded. And any discussion here from staff or Mitch Stone, our Assistant Town Manager and Director of the Office of Economic Development? So um, we had a resignation, Lisa Buck, who represented uh, the Comprehensive Plan Committee from the Planning Board. Um, and Mike Costello is also on the planning board, so he had, he had agreed to fill that planning board spot, spot in her stead, and so this is just a replacement of, of that kind of appointee. I'm going to pay Michael the same thing we're paying Lisa. <laughs> yeah, good. Which, these for the record, volunteer, these are volunteer opportunities to serve the town of Orono. <laughs> yeah. Don't need to call it out. <laughs> we're getting free work. Don't call it out. Yeah. yeah. All right. Any other thanks, you Mitch? Thanks, Mitch. Any other questions? Okay, Councilor Bretzel? In favor. Councilor Baker? In favor. Councilor Larry? In favor. Councilor Demerits in favor. Council Marks? In favor. Council Powers? In favor. Councilor Kenny? In favor. Passed unanimously. We thank Michael for his service and all the members of the uh, Comprehensive Planning Committee for the work they're doing. It's a, it's a lot of very detailed, intri intricate work. Um, Order 24-177, order approving the mini grant proposal from Sam Diamond of $750 for painting of the pickleball lines on one tennis court at Orono High School. Can we get a motion? I'm so moved. Second. Okay, so moved by Councilor Marks, second by Councilor Powers. Um, yeah, I've got some issues. We've talked, I have some, 
to start the discussion unless someone wants to go ahead of me. Um, so I appreciated the back and forth of the school, the school board, um, uh, and the, the vote that the school board had to, to move ahead with this. It is in fact their, their facility. Um, Sam Diamond brought this into us before we'd updated our guidelines. And I talked to her this afternoon and um, you know, ideally, I think the best way to facilitate this is it's the school's property, it's the town's resources, I assume. And Sam doesn't have any interest in you know, checking, running down a vendor and things like that. So to the extent that we could have our very able staff at the school and the, and the town execute this addition to the facility, it makes a lot of sense. Are people comfortable with that in terms of this mini grant? So essentially we're committing $750 from the mini grant for this request with the understanding that the school and the town are really gonna be the ones that bring it together. So I'm not comfortable with us directing that. Um, you know, I don't think that's our spot to direct that to happen. Um, I'm comfortable if staff, if that fits into what staff is doing it, both like we don't direct, have nothing to do. We don't direct any staff. So I'm not comfortable with directing staff. Um, if I would ask for that um, from them on whether that's something they take on or if it's something that gets done outside. We do direct the town manager. So that's the one thing, you know, we, so my thinking is just an order um, approving the mini grant proposal with the understanding the intent of the council is that the town manager would execute the execute the implementation so as he chooses. I think that's I think that's kind of I, that seems not proper to me. We do, we direct the town manager, but we don't direct him on how to direct staff necessarily. Yeah. So I think we're I think we're going over a line here. Can I just ask a question before we get into what the amendment is? Can we just hear from staff? Um, because I mean, it, it makes sense to me that this is a mini grant where it's school owned property. And I, I would be surprised if the school wanted any random citizen to pick the contractor who was gonna to touch their property. So I'm thinking our town managers already talked to the superintendent and maybe you could update us a little on how you would see it working. Yeah, I think it's pretty simple because I get an email from the superintendent. Thanks. They want to pick the vendor. There's a little bit that the cost is around $825, they thought. But the way it was worded to me, we're going to cut them a check for $750 and pickleball lines will show up on those courts. Um, we can check back up. But that was the way yeah. the town staff was going to handle it. I would, uh, I guess if you want to put it in the direct, I would direct the finance director to write a check to the school for $750. That was going to be the end of the so just authorizing the seven hundred fifty dollar yeah. check to go to the school, assuming the school I mean, can handle how the lines get put on. I guess with what you shared, it is. I mean, it was not requested by the school. I think we've been inserted into the process such that the school had to make that decision. We couldn't do it for them. They said yes. I definitely don't think we should be sending money to Sam Diamond to give to the school to do the work to get it done. But we we have done that on uh, before it's gone to the request. It has, and that's the question about this mini grant. It's a challenge. We have yeah. a, I mean, I want to get it done. Don't want to make it more complicated than it needs to be. But how do you, how do we fund it from the mini grant if it's not going to adhere to the mini grant guidelines? I think though the last time that the money went, like, are you thinking of the lighting, Leo, on the field? That is a nonprofit that was formed to fundraise for that lighting on the soccer field. So there was an entity to send the money to. It didn't get sent to an individual citizen. <laughs> Right for that well, project. So all of the other ones have gone to individual citizens. Sure. They've been yeah. responsible for send for spending it. Actually, sure. And yeah. and back to not to beat the dead horse, but I do think we need to be the, the one of the key things that we've talked about is this this mini grant thing is ours and it shouldn't ever come up where we're accepting and then turning around and asking staff to do something for the mini grant, such as paint lines and things like that. And then and then also. We shouldn't call them, I think, in a meeting to say, hey, is this OK? Because I we kind of brought this up before that that's it's kind of a lot of pressure for someone to come forward at that point and say, yeah, no, this isn't doesn't fit in my schedule. Sorry yeah. is a hard position to put them in. So can, can we maybe have an agreement on us not trying to direct staff from this position? Yeah, Leo, I think the thing is, is that that isn't really exactly how this went. Like staff has already taken charge of this and put it back on our agenda. I mean, we looked at it and said, this doesn't need a lot of specs. And so we asked staff, as I remember, how they wanted to handle it, maybe can speak to this. But my understanding is that Clint 
said he wanted to spek to Meredith about it. The school board had a meeting about it and it's town staff that are bringing this back to us now. This isn't us saying we need to come back to this mini grant and make a decision. This is town staff saying to us as I understand it, here's what we think, here's how you think we think you should proceed on it. Is that correct, Clint? Yes, and again, at the request of the school, the school said they were ready to move forward. They would take care of it. I mean, if they asked, I mean, we'd always listen if there was something else, but they didn't ask other than we got to get the mini grant approved. So that's why I was just, again, logistically, there is something here to give it to a yeah. resident, to give to the school. I write that doesn't follow kind of the intent of your policy, but we are following the intent of the requester to get it to the school to do it. That's the way it's going to happen. So. And Dan's spoken to the requester and she sounds fine with that. Yeah. So I think we're fine. Yeah. That that doesn't seem like an issue. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't want to belabor this, especially for $750. Um I guess to, to echo kind of the to echo what Lee was saying, but also to take it from another approach, my primary concern with this mini grant is that it's essentially a to me, it seems like a citizen requesting funds from one town department to be given to another town department. That doesn't that 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 seems to go against the uh, purpose the 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 informal purpose of the mini grant program um it just it and yes i mean dan brought up the fact that you know not following the current guidelines which whatever we can get around that administratively but just it just it doesn't Yeah, this seems like a hard money type of something that should be budgeted for because it's one town department giving money to another town department as requested by a citizen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, I'll vote. Uh, it's, yeah, I, that's just my concern with it. Excuse me, Spring came up. Sonia, did you have something you wanted to share? I didn't want that to get lost. Um, I, I think I'm ready to move ahead with a vote on this personally. Thanks, though. Um, I, I hear what others are saying, and I, I like that we have a sort of better process for this moving forward that has some more clarity. Um, and also, you know, this came in before that process was was set, and I think it would be fair to just move ahead with a vote on this item and and perhaps not belabor it. I, I just have one thing to say about it. I think it, this is a good example of how we should do things personally, because we are going to give it to an individual who's going to take it to um, an outside contractor that was that was in this for for a lot more money, you know, um, pending if we could get approval from the school, the school said yes, and they're also like we can do this for a lot cheaper. Like this just seems like a no brainer to me. Like yes, it's going from one one entity to another in the town, but it's facilitated by uh, by an individual who was going to go out to an outside contractor. It just wasn't going. <laughs> Feels like we found a better way forward. So, <laughs> so I find it to be, yeah. I find it to be like a way of getting the thing done and in in as an efficient way as possible. It should, it should have come forward as a budget. It should have come forward as like a budget request and been you know part of the parks and recs department to you know grant seven hundred fifty dollars to the to the school department to paint the lines, um, you know that kind of thing. But it's sort of that inherent messiness that we're. Looking for, you know, getting to yes for people, helping people get to yes when they have ideas in Orono. So, yeah, I mean, it is sort of an unorthodox way for us to be using these funds, especially now that we've set up rules for them. But as I recall, the, the initial motivation for us creating this fund was to facilitate an easy way for good ideas for building community to happen in Orono and creating the capacity for pickleball to be played, which is a fast growing sport, something a lot of people want to do. Uh, I think it's a good idea and I'm in favor of it. E e Although going forward, I think that things like this that are gonna be moving from the department, I think we might say this might not be the right forum for this yeah. topic. Yeah. Thanks, Rob. I, I just wanna say, I agree with that comment entirely. And I guess I just wanna be really clear. It isn't really moving from department to department. Like the RSU is an entirely separate legal entity yeah. from the town of Orono. And that's important to note. It is not a department of the town of Orono. It's an entirely separate legal entity. And I actually think that things that come from the public and encourage both of us entities to talk to each other is a good thing, because I don't think we always do it often enough. And we're doing it much more 
um, lately. And I'm appreciating all the ways that it's happening, whether that's coming from staff or whether that's coming from the public, but it is an entirely separate legal entity. And that's all I, I get that symbolically yeah. one part yeah. of the town to another part of the town. So if we could we, Clint, in terms of your direction from this or with this, would it be best if it said order approving the town manager to transfer set up to $750? For the painting of pickleball lines on one tennis court at Orono High School to RSU 26. And I think you, I would leave per the request of Sam. Dunn. Per the request of, okay. Yeah, I think it's important to just remember that's what initiated it. Got it. You want me to, are you right? So, uh, oh, I'll get it. Are you getting it? Okay. At 548, I mumbled through an amendment. So, <laughs> no, <for next. laughs> well, so I'm going to propose that we amend order 24 177 to read. Order approving the town manager to transfer a sum of up to $750 from mini grant proceeds for the painting of pickleball lines on one tennis court at Orono High School pursuant to the request of Sam Dime. To RSU 26. To RSU 26. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Sam moved. So, I'll move. so moved. Second. Second. Okay. Sonia, are you, any more discussion about it before we? So we're gonna to have to approve the amendment and then approve the order. So let's, let's Council Bretzel, we're favor. hearing on the, uh, the amendment, amendment in language. Okay. Council Faker? Yes. Council Lowry, Council Demers in favor. Councilor Marks? In favor. Councilor Powers? In favor. Councilor Kenny? In favor. All right, now we've approved the amended order. We need to vote again on the order itself. Yep. Um, can I get a motion to approve order 24177 as amended? So moved. Okay. Again. Moved and seconded. Councilor Berthsold. In favor. Okay. Councilor Baker. In favor. Councilor Larway. In favor. Councilor Demaris in favor. Councilor Marks. In favor. Councilor Powers. In favor. Councilor Kenny. In favor. Okay. Um, that concludes. Uh, thank you very much. That no order, though, I wouldn't close the special because yeah. we moved yeah. an item. So that's just because of that. Yeah. That was a um, unanimous vote. Um, and I'm not going to close the special town council agenda because we're going to come back to special town. We're going to come back to special town council business items at the end of our meeting pursuant to our agenda review decisions at the top of the meeting. But we will open the workshop um, on the community development committee, which is um, on the route to quarter project. And this is where. Um, <clears throat> Sorry, pull up my notes where we'll uh, discuss what we've learned and kind of develop a direction on where we go from here. And I want to first thank um, staff and I think a really good job of synthesizing the comments, bringing the comments together, collecting the comments for us. We have a, a spreadsheet that's now that's available to the public that has access to the comments that have come in. It's really, really helpful. And uh, for us to meet with you, and I look forward to the, I know the work the town manager and the staff have been doing to move this forward. So, and Carolyn, you can jump in now anytime you want. Well, I mean, I pretty much said the concerns that I had. <laughs> you know, I, I needed to get that out there. So, yeah. I'll go. Yeah, thank yeah. you. I'm teasing you. I, I do that a lot. I'm sorry. Dan? We're going to move. We're going to get a brief. That was a side joke, though. It wasn't like an opening for. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. So um, let's get. We're gonna get a presentation from staff, and then we'll have a chance to talk, and we'll we'll recognize you to talk. So you me. just opened up the group sheet part of. Yeah, we're on that part. Yep. All right. I want to make it a point that in the earlier meeting, Carolyn said it's now here in the meeting complete. Okay, so that it's not missed, and it's not put in the wrong place because her needs to do with. The business and right. the commerce and yeah. the neighbors and the whole community at large. Yeah. We have. And it was 20 minutes ago. We're going to remember it. We're going to turn to Clint and he's going to give us a briefing. And then we're going to have, we're going to have at least have another chance to comment. You'll yes. have a chance to comment on this item as part of, as it comes up. This is a committee meeting and we typically invite members of the public who attend with us and have an interest to, uh, you know, Thank join you. in and have a, a brief comment on this topic. Could it be better? I Great. mean, I appreciate so much yeah. this because this interacts with the community, Carolyn's needs and, and her business needs 
I, I, I mean, my God, Orono and Pat's yep. are one and the same on this. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Um, that was just me teasing. I, so we're going to turn to Clint. So have issues as far as this corridor goes. Okay, we're going to. Clint's going to give us a briefing first, and we're going to have a council discussion, and then we'll recognize you as part of that discussion. Okay. So that's how you want to do that. That's how that's we're going to do it. Respect. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So I got a few things that we're going to make available afterwards, but this is, and I, and I appreciate the flexibility community. This has been a lot of information, a lot of details to bring together, especially in the first couple of months of being here and some great comments to synthesize and to bring together with some great recommendations and themes. The theme, there's only one theme I'm seeing here right now, and that's a chance to be fully engaged and fully certain moving forward in the process. And there are a lot of other questions that we're going to answer and going to go through, but I focused staff's time, my time on what is the process from August 26th to a point where we need some decisions. And we are on a decision tree. And so some of the information in the packet included the uh, some outlines of key dates, but I mean, certain things that hasn't maybe been stressed enough. This is a funded design project through the federal government and the state government. There's $2.7 million appropriated for the town of Orno to design a project if we want. And that design cost to us is 10% right now, $300,000 more. The process you're finishing is included in that infographic that he's bringing up right there. And this is what a project at MDOT would look like. And I know it's small and people at home can enlarge and do it. You are at block two on the far left where the dollar signs show up. We have not gone past block two. You spent a year getting to the point to decide whether you want to kick in your 300,000. So in doing this, we've seen some concepts and I'm going to stress again, concepts, not what we will build, concepts to bring on more conversation to fully inform DOT as they go through a design stage. That stage from where it says step three, project funded, all the way over to you see a PDR, We'll take a year and a half to two years and there's at least two informational meetings programmed in their planning with the community to have more input they also will meet one-on-one -on -one as they get to the later part with direct land right issues and i think that there's some more information we need to share with the community on this so what i did and hopefully it's not too scary is and this will be made available right after as i put together in a spreadsheet because I needed to get very linear of how we could go forward from today to get to some points. And as I lay this out, as it comes around to you, it starts with tonight. We're going to have a council meeting. But I think there's certain steps that we need to finish so that you can go forward. And this is what I'm hoping that from tonight, we can have some of those steps to go forward with, which includes seeing the initial concept plan from Sebago, forming a focus group, and then also it's been suggested that maybe we would have a right of way working group, two groups of people, the focus group, keeping us on time for what's in orange, the working group that would be through throughout with right of way questions. Why am I losing eight inches, eight feet, whatever? Can it be realigned? Can it be this? It's another place because the individual landowners will have direct input with MDOD, but it also gives an opportunity for the council to take some input and as you'll see in these timelines, I indicate that at every informational level where we have an informational meeting, the council will, will put that into writing as to the key themes we heard and send that forward to whoever's doing the design, which could be MDOT staff, could be a contract with Sebago, could be a lot of different versions. But this is pretty methodical and you will see it is heavily front loaded. This is a lot of work now. There are dates we need to hit. If we're going to be considered for future funding and to get this project rolling, there's only so many of them that are gonna occur. I did some research through the state's website. It appears that we're one of few that has the funding through the federal government and state already waiting, but there's over 15 in the state of Maine doing planning with, of concepts. So if we're delaying, does money get moved around? I don't know. I honestly can't say that for certain. But I know for certain there is federal funding naming the town of Orno getting $2.4 million for its design. And the state of Maine has said, we, we will do 10%. And they're waiting for Orno to say, do you want to kick in 10%? I think we need a better concept, an enhanced revision, not 
highly technical, but I'm no more than maybe five, six additional drawings. But we also need to see the finalized report from Sebago. And with all the input you've given and where we're at, one of the things that we're working towards is, could we get the majority of these questions answered quickly? And I think we can. We can't answer them all because some of the questions are contingent upon what we end up building. So we gotta, there is a, there is no way to get away from a leap of faith. There is a point where you know the design work still has to be done and there's going to be more changes. That's the whole point of going from a concept to design. And that's the one risk we're gonna have to take as a community is our desire to see a new corridor that improves safety and flow and the objectives you put forward where we wanna be knowing that it's $300,000 right now, real soon. And if we like the final design and we wanna build it, it's 3 million. In the memo, I put some other numbers in there. This is hard because there will probably be no way that this project would be done in one fell swoop. So the cost will go higher and we have time value money issues to deal with. But under current funding mechanisms, the town's portion, if we forget that what we're in, would either be 20 to 50%. So it would double or be half of the total cost of the entire project. Now there is a way where it costs you nothing. If you did nothing, you will never pay anything out of local property taxes. There may be matches here and there for certain enhancements, but maintenance service treatment is a state funded program. They will come out here, and just put payment down and you will pay none of that and nothing changes, it stays right like you see it. And that may be a desired option, but I want to make sure you saw that. But then if we don't do this at the 10% share for final construction through BACs, it's a 20% share program in multiple projects, most in most circumstances. It can go as high as 50% if it's all on us and our requesting project. But again, these are all the different ways. And again, to say it's perfect, this is how it's set up currently. It could change. Those are the current numbers. So again, 3 million construction could grow to 6 to 12 million if you ignore future costs and phasing. Are you it talking could, about, though, if, are you talking about um, if we fund it through a different mechanism and we don't go this this way? Correct. $3 million, you know, if- 3 million for, is what's in front of us right now to do the whole quarter. Yeah. If we don't do it that way, I would say you're looking six to 12 or even as high as 15. For and again, what? for again, I don't know, we haven't designed it <laughs> for work on route two. This is the whole tough question. What do you want to build? What do you not want to build? Could we turn it into an $8 million project? Maybe. Could we turn it into an $80 million project? Again, very possible. Right now we're contemplating a pretty good estimate of about $30 million to do the whole corridor. If we sh keep shrinking it, and we made, there's input we have that Sebago wants to shrink this. They've heard there's things that we shouldn't do or don't want to do as a community. It will result in some savings as we go forward. There's also a couple that are cost increasers, and we may not be able to fit them in in this $30 million project if we even end up wanting to do it. But I'd like to get Sebago back in this with a concept plan in front of you and then in that orange area, we start kicking off a very heavily week to week meeting with, with citizens where we hit some very big issues. And we would even spend a, a whole meeting on all the questions answered to date that we can answer and would be on the website, would be fully engaging as much as we can. But with the way I see this is on 9-9, I'm going to work with Sebago to get them kind of a rough estimate on what an enhanced plan would cost and if the timeline's right. If those are right on the 23rd, I would need approval to fund those. And we'd also be making a commitment that when that is presented, we're moving forward on design, which would take you all the way to PDR, which you have not yet agreed to build it. You would design it. And this could be a very well-designed project or poorly designed project that gets put on a shelf and we never do. And our cost for that is $300,000. But if we don't do anything, and this is where I've shared with a few of you, Doing nothing is sometimes a decision. If we do not make decisions in the next few months, month and a half, we're saying no for now. And that means we could lose this project or other designs or those monies may go back. I don't think it's necessarily gonna happen quick. But again, if they think we're never going to move forward, 
there would be concerns. So we got to get to a point where we're at least saying, let's proceed a little bit, or we're not ready yet, and we're going to take a few more months, fine. But again, when you start saying we're done and we're out, or we're just not deciding, they're probably going to find ways to reallocate that funding. That would be my assumption as a is what I've seen in government. That's the best I do. The last one, as I go to the questions, this is a potential resolve that is very draft of what you could pass on the 23rd to get us moving forward. It does not commit you to building the project, but it does commit the town to saying we're ready to design the project. But it also inputs many steps of what we're going to do to bring it as a community up kind of project. We're going to have a voice the whole way through. Matt, yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I have a, a, a strange, not a strange question, but I have a question that may not have an answer. And that is, I know underneath Route 2, oh, pick so there cool. is um, a very old sewer that we would be replacing if we did this project. Yeah. And my question is, like, like, when would we be replacing that sewer if we didn't do this project? And if we didn't do this project, how much is it going to cost for us to replace that sewer um, by like digging up the road and doing all that? And then that is one of the together? questions. Yeah, and that is one of the questions we want to answer. We will have to do it. Yeah. Right now, it's it's waiting on this to see if you'll do it because it would save them right. opening the road. If it breaks tomorrow, we're opening up the road and fixing the break tomorrow. That's right, right. the reality. What it's about. Areas are over 100 years old, and that's what they're looking to fix. If we have to do it on our own, we have to fix the road we dig down in to get at it. That would be on our cost. That goes right by your house, Matt. The, the only reason, well, it does. So <laughs> we can get some numbers back, to but, this. But it, it, the only reason I ask is because if, it, if, if us fixing, let's say we had to fix the, all that sewer, if that's going to cost us, you know, $5 million anyways, then we're already, we wouldn't get the road and we'd have to fix the sewer, whereas this way we could fix the sewer and get a new. And the sewer road. cost is still ours. We yeah. do have to. No, no, I understand that. I know that that's our. I get, that's one of the numbers that, that we've seen. Saying. Yes, and we've seen that in the questions. And that's one of the ones that we want to because that would do in this process and get an answer yeah, to okay. the community. Uh, I, that would tip me highly in one direction um, if if it if it's looking like they're getting to be the same. I mean, then, these are going to be. Yeah. Highly, highly researched yeah. estimates, meaning that you can, I mean, it'll be a little bit better, but you can go on Google right now and look up the cost per, per foot to install sewer lines. Yeah. We'll get it a little bit more refined. We have experts, you know, that we work with and we have a team of staff that's very good at this. We'll give you a good number, but again, it will be based on estimates, not it, design. It, the only here. difference is the road will be open. Yep. We're still Correct. paying for the for the sewer. Right. Correct. So can I just ask though, apart from the cost, which I understand requires research and looking at all that, does the town not maintain some sort of schedule of when they expect sewer lines to need to be redone? And when was this one expected to need to be redone? We will double check it, but my understanding is is there's a lot of lists and there's not a detailed of year by year for the next 25 years. Mm -hmm. Which roads and which sections to do next and when. But I assume we know when it was last done and how long they typically last. Installed 100 years ago. That's what I want to know. So could you put that louder, sir? So pipe pipe 100. 100. It, okay. It is, Thank you. It is pretty high on the priority list, Thank but you. waiting because if this project worked, it would make sense to do it then. So my guess is if it's not done, it's probably one of the next projects that needs to be And I probably misspoke. There is a priority list in that, from what I've had heard from Chris, we know how old pipe is in the town. And there's a bunch of pipe that's old. That's when you hear priority list because of its age, it's it's high up in our minds and in our thoughts and our planning. But there's no specific do this 500 feet first and second and third and fourth. That's helpful. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Mitch. So that's an, that does bring up the other point that we're talking about 300,000 and 3 million. We absolutely would need to understand yep. what the what the that cost is that we'd be bearing if we move forward. But the, it, back to back to this, the bigger the bigger question is: I, I when and maybe you said it, and I just didn't quite understand. When will we hear answers to some of these? Really, you know, we've heard from this school board um, that they've taken a vote or a proclamation or what did they? Yeah, do? yeah, they said it's a proclamation. Yeah, proclamation I, so it's, that they are very opposed to a you know. There is, there is a lot of opposition or concerns with most of the elements of the current plan. And I think we need to hear a response to it and not 
in the response isn't okay we won't do that there you know either a response okay this doesn't make sense we won't do it or depending why we would do it so we i think we need a response to a lot of questions for me i definitely would need a response to a lot of questions before i'm i'm willing to even talk about spending 300,000 and just broadly i assume because one of the things that the, the school board said was they didn't want goodrich going two ways either um, we've had a lot of a lot of concern about parallel parking on Mill Street. Is it safe to assume that the elements that aren't Route Two really do? What, um, they land with us, so we're responsible for non-Route Two questions. Is that an accurate way to look at this? Or I mean, uh, I guess you got to be careful when you say what is and isn't a Route Two. It's a major Route Two is a major collector. It has minor collectors that flow, flow into it. They're a lower road, so we have more flexibility but they do flow in to a major collector. So we can't mess up the state's approach to its road system without their approval, because it is, that is, we don't, the town of Orno does not own the road. Route that two. is owned, yeah, that is so own. We do own the road. Correct. And where those right-of-ways and easements, where they start and stop, but I mean, it's a collaboration. We have to work together. We have to figure out how we want them to meet in with each other. So. Right, but I'm, I'm just wondering if at the end of the day, if, if they design this and say, no, we, we need to go Goodrich both ways, can the town still say, no, that's a that's a town road? I don't think that, I mean, I'm, yes, DOT could make decisions. They really can. They can, but they're not going to. They're, they're just not that kind of agency. They haven't been for over a decade. If you, they will not do the project rather than changing it to something we're very upset by. I mean, but I mean, we, not individuals, we, the collective community, and and again, they will present tough decisions to you. If they're adamant about something, they're going to say no. For example, putting in a traffic light. If we really, really wanted a traffic light because of one of our side roads, and we had a really, really good reason, they'll hear it, but it really does come down to, you don't have enough traffic there to warn it. So why, we, they don't want to get into the game of they put in traffic signals in places they're not needed. So it, this is where I'm trying to get us through I'm trying to focus process where I know the decisions in this process are the key factors, but we got to start with process to get to the decisions. And I'm trying to develop that first rather than answering everything. But I will say, if everything goes as planned, you asked me the date, 9-23-04-24 is the date I would hope to have a very good comprehensive list of responses. But we've got to, am I on track to keep going this way? Or are we going to wait? No, let's wait and wait a couple more weeks. And if we're going to wait a couple more weeks and talk on 9-9 about the process, then those dates keep moving out further and further and further. You know, we got to kind of, are we going or are we not going? Going or not going, what do you mean by it? Because I think for me, I, this was, this is, that step is absolutely what I expected our next, our next step to be before we're talking about spending 300 pounds. Is that what you're saying? And that's because I'm all, I, that's yep, exactly that what I'm first whole about. white section gets us to the orange section on the same day that you would see the answers and all that information that re this resolve that I just handed out in a draft would be approved on the same night, knowing that we're going to that we've seen the concepts, we've heard the answers, we're doing another enhanced plan to get some other drawings to see how they all look when we're pulling them together. But we're going to the next step. Those are the steps I put in, and we can change these. I had to come up with something to start from. So this is a process that keeps us moving. Council Mark, sorry. Yep. So um, Clint, just process-wise, um, I understand that we're being asked on the 23rd as a council, take a vote on funding the 300,000. And at that point in time, you predict that we would have from Sebago both their original designs that we've seen once already, but with the choices between option A and B is gonna come back. We would not have the enhanced design, whatever we've asked them to do beyond yep. A and B options. Correct. But we would have, that's what you're saying, correct? Yeah, we would not have the enhanced design. We would only have the original A and B options with which one they're recommending. And with all the feedback that they've kind of worked right. into a final conceptual plan. Uh -huh. And we would have, you're, you keep saying answers to questions. So what you mean is answers to specific questions that counselors have sent to you that you're compiling? Or what do you mean when you say the, answers to questions? So you questions? see that list you've got, the, the table, there's over a hundred and something. Mm -hmm. We're going to try to go through that and get as many answers as we can by the 23rd. Okay. I'm going to go through all the council comments and see what we can put together. But again, full disclosure, and I, one keeps jumping out of, you know, how much would it cost to just do sidewalks? We can give you a ballpark on it, 
but that we're not going to design what that road will, it is what it is, and we'll add some sidewalks, but we're not going to spend time doing that as a concept. So it will be just a very rough estimate. It's not going to be de detailed. Yeah. Absolutely. And I just don't want to give a misconception that we're coming back with designs when we're working on concepts. So my, my question in this process as laid out is, it was my understanding coming into the meeting tonight, and I understand that it has shifted for good reason because we need to develop a clear process. But what we said at our last council meeting was that we would come into this meeting tonight as a council, having looked at the hundred of public comments document, which was sent to us and have a discussion as a council about those hundred and something, whatever it is, comments. And what we see as a council in, as themes in those comments and what we would like to direct Sebago to respond to for themes that showed up in those comments. And I believe that step to be important because while I think the minutia of every individual comment and getting an answer matters, I also think doing our job as a council to take a look at what themes are emerging and being clear with our contractor about these are the themes that we see and that we need to see addressed in order to there be for there to be a plan that as a council we think we'd be willing to you know vote yes on is important i mean it's a it's a lot of minutia questions and that's important but there's also the council doing our work and saying these are our whatever we call them must haves or want to haves or whatever we're calling them back to the contractor so my concern with process is that it's not important to me that we do that tonight it is what we said we would do tonight i don't mind if it's not tonight but it matters to me that it happen early and soon before i'm asked to take a vote because i am not ready to take a vote until we as a council have that discussion and talk about what themes there are that we've seen that we would like the enhanced plan to address. Enhanced plan doesn't have to exist yet, but our clarity as a council on what we're asking that enhanced plan to have is important to me. I don't know where anyone else feels, but I don't think it's enough to say to Sebago, answer a hundred minutia questions and don't hear from us that these are themes that we think need to be addressed for this plan to be something we see the community wanting to move and the council wanting to move forward. I, would say that I, I mean, I think that makes a lot of sense for us to help guide some more focus. But I'll also say, I really appreciate how you laid this out and how much of an emphasis you've placed on public input. Like a ton of meetings, having a focus group. It's my understanding that this amount of community input is not usual for these processes either. Uh, but I appreciate that you understand that that's something that you care about a lot. Um, and I really like the look of this overall. I think that this really is in, in line with what I, I want to see. Uh, but I, I do agree, Sarah. I think I, I, I would like us to soon give some additional direction uh, even before we get to that, that point where we're... Do, how much... Yeah, I think <clears throat> we've gotten a lot of, of input and... In it, when the themes that have emerged from it, and I, and I think you know we've heard pretty strongly around the the good you the um, roundabout right here, and, and it seems like that's perhaps a non-starter. I'm not ready to get into you know you know how the park you know, the parking spot issues and stuff like that at, at the council level. Well, parallel the parking on Mill Street, right? Seems to be fairly consensus ish. Yep. Right? That we're going to keep it as is, and why are we showing concepts? So one of the things for that first concept plan is to go back to Sebago and just say. Go right in there. Bullet number one. We're not going to do parallel parking. Yep, and we're not going to say not the recommendation of the town. And that's what I'm trying to get to is to get them the information. And Sarah, you're dead on right. If there's some other key decisions that you know that we know, I guess I need to hear them. I want to because I haven't I haven't been able to figure out how to figure out which ones we're certain of yet. It's been so much more questions process minded. I felt I had to focus on that because I felt I couldn't get to. Those so we had we had two we had two responses to the you know let's share the information we we do this in a certain we have a there's a method to this right we meet on you know Clint Sarah and I meet on Monday and then Mondays in between we shared the we shared um, the information with counselors that you know invited we get some good responses from a couple of you and it's how do you make that how do you how do you bring that forward how does the council do that I mean we're going to go through a hundred different the whole matrix and spend time doing it because let's you know if we're going to do that let's schedule a meeting starting at two o'clock and we can work our way through it but I, and i guess the question is i think i'm hopeful that this res may perhaps this resolution gets we work on it over the next period we've got a month between now and the june july september 23rd meeting perhaps there's an opportunity to work in those key elements into the resolution 
So we signify what our key, I mean, it's going to be like four or five things. It can't be, you know, like don't go down Pine, don't mess with Pine Street, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, but that's kind of how I, I think about it. Like, I think that's a good idea, Dan, to yeah. include them in what the resolution is. I think, I don't think it's a, has to be a million hour discussion. I think it's a charge to each of us as a counselor to look at those hundred comments, figure out what themes you think are there, come in with your own list of the three or four themes we each see and sit down and talk about what those, they could be all compiled into one document of everyone's three or four. So we have a list when we come into the meeting of here's the ones that each counselor believes are there and maybe that's 10 and we talk about how to get that down to four or five. I think that can be an efficient meeting, but although it's true that this is a month of time, we have exactly one meeting between now and the meeting where we're being asked to vote on the yeah. 23rd, according to this schedule. So unless we think we're gonna do that at the meeting on the 9th, I don't think the 23rd is a reasonable schedule. I think if we can do that on the 9th, it's a fine schedule. So that's personally where I'm at. The biggest two weeks. Yeah, sorry, sure. yeah I guess, um, thank you, Clint, and, and everybody for doing this. Um, I echo a lot of what, what Clint was saying in that, I think we are on a time crunch here. If we, uh, this is, in my mind, this project is a once in a generational opportunity for this town. So um, either we've got to decide that we're doing it or not. Um, so, you know, I think time is of the essence. Uh, and so, you know, as far as the, the, the timeline, I mean, I've read through these comments. Um, yeah, I have a lot of just specific minutia driven budget questions, but nothing that I think, you know, would really hold up moving forward in my mind. So looking at this list, I, you know, some big themes have already jumped out at me as far as, you know, roundabouts and right of way issues. And, and so I, in my mind, I think it would be pretty easy for us to come to an agreement to say, to, to go back to Sebago and say, listen, we liked your plan. However, you know, we need to see it without taking of right away, or such taking or, you know, less round or something to that extent. I think that'd be pretty, pretty easy for us to do right? because there's a lot here, but there's some big themes that keep repeating. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I agree with um, Jacob. I'd, I'd like to move forward on this um, expediently. And I feel like I'd be ready to come to the next meeting prepared to say, I heard a lot about uh, safety for children as a theme that a lot of people expressed, you know, I think, I think we can have an efficient meeting and coalesce around some of those high priority things we've heard over and over in order to really push this process in the direction that we have some good public input suggesting um, we'll make it a better plan for Orono. So what if we workshop, what if we take the next two weeks as individual counselors and we could approach Clint to the extent we need to with questions, but then come into the meeting on the 9th with, uh, at the end, of that, that meeting, that's a regular business meeting. So toward, at the end of that, we tack on a conversation about what direction we want to see for this resolution in terms of four or five key themes that we think we have consensus on. And then we still just keep that in, and we can table it if we have to, right? If we get to the 23rd and get, Dab nab it, we don't have it. Um, right, Jake, I did that for you. First um, yeah, first one. Um, won't be the last. We can get we can push it from the 23rd if we need to, but let's keep I, I like the idea of I, this is an incredible amount of work that, that that Clint and the staff have done. Um and it's a process that's gonna lead to a project that reflects what the people of Orono, you know, what commonly want to see happen. There's gonna be some small things that you know people are gonna object to and but this is going to get us, I think, to really frame out the, the project in a way that and have a lot of engagement and transparency that will be helpful. Indeed. Yeah. I'll also add to that that um, in addition to broad design, um, sorry, broad design ideas, I think there are some bigger budgetary questions that, you know, particularly we should know also before we agree to spend three hundred thousand dollars so um you know our, our themes are not just design related i agree with you i have a question about that in a minute and i i want to say i think that's a great idea dan the thing i'd like to clarify about that is what i don't want us to do is just show up here with all of our ideas verbally and nothing visual that we can see as we're having our conversation so i really would like to ask if we could as counselors 
send what we think are the three or four themes that matter most in our community based on the input we've read in the next plan to Clint so that we get a list that we're looking at as we talk. It's much more efficient and a much better way to organize discussion. So I would like a date by which we get those to Clint so he has time to compile them for meeting personally. If nobody else likes it, but to me, I'm all about coming into the meeting and being efficient and having things to look at and discuss. Yep. Okay with them. Yeah. That work. Good. What, you, what would be a good time frame for the for that? Knowing that you got to bring us a document on the ninth, and it's got to be part of the agenda that goes out three days before. Yeah, I mean, yeah. we get it to you next Monday, a week from yeah, today. In the, a week from today. Yeah. yeah. End of the day, you know, or first thing Tuesday morning, yeah. probably. Yeah. That way, if you want to. Do last night cram session on Monday night. Yeah, so the second. So that would be the second. Yeah, because Labor right. Day too. Yeah. So, but yeah, so let's do the Tuesday Monday. morning. Yeah. Tuesday morning. Tuesday morning, 10 a.m. Five is the ideal number, but you know, no one's gonna get and so the the only thing that's gonna run here, and again, this is this is me opening up a topic as a manager that you're always careful, but I guess input I need. There are things that are coming out, and I think Sebago's kind of wrestling with them as well. Because I know staff are where, um, you know, well, you know, it's like your two kids. I want to go to eat at McDonald's and I want to go to Burger yeah. King. Well, you can't go to both. Where are we going to end up going? We're, you know, there are some of those that we're kind of coming to that this community one, and I, it's not camps, but there's just general things they're looking for. I think those should be identified, not in the sense that they're can be addressed or fixed, because I don't think they can be. But I think it would be good to identify. You know, the right of way is only so far wide. We can't fit five travel lanes and 15 sidewalks and 23 bike lanes. It's only this wide. And they got to go determine that for sure. So is, is that something, and I, don't, I don't know if Sebago would have this, but they might be able to put together just a, what the pitfalls, things well, to be I careful think, of. I think it's actually not a pitfall. I think that's something we need to look at as we look at that priorities list. There may be some where we say to Sebago, this is clear. The whole community pretty much is saying this. And there might be another one where the community is pretty split on this. So we'd like you to bring us your best compromise between this side and this side on this. It's our job as a council to, I mean, look at community input and then set direction for Sebago. That's sure. our job. So we okay. set the direction. We Some of them we may say this way and others we may say, it seems like you need to find a happy medium between these, right? Okay. Can I just, I, I liked, you and I spoke after the last meeting that, yeah, this is a good, we have to do at minimum this, have us come and talk about it. But I, I it felt like from in, in incredible work, Clint, so this is great. Thank you for, just trying to be, for putting this all together. But um, it felt to me that I was saying we should do it because it seemed like Sebago wasn't. Now it seems like Sebago is, unless I'm misunderstanding this. I feel like they are, that's what they're doing now. And I feel like one, uh, us interceding and saying, okay, give us till two weeks to for us to put our input. I'm not sure where, I mean, they collected, I, I really have felt like from the beginning, this was Sebago's job to do. They took the community feedback. Now they've got to, they've got to boil it down and come back to us. I'm not sure. I don't, I, I'm, I'm a little torn on whether we should meet and talk about and say, these are their these are the, I mean, if, if it's like these are the hard things that we heard just to make sure they get it, that's yeah. probably not bad. I don't know if now this messes them up because my understanding from this was after tonight, we say, yeah, this we want to hear from Sebago. And just to clarify, I you just said they will have a final um, concept plan. So it's they will have a different concept plan than the two. No. Not different. Uh -uh. They'll take the concepts they've given you and they're going to boil down based upon what they think they heard. So it is going to be it's just going to be A or B. It, it would be some, you know, and again, it, it may say, and a good example is say, you know what, right turn out of pine? No, we heard that. We got it. I think they have. I'm pretty sure they've heard that mm -hmm. one. And so you'll see, they're not going to go redraw it. They're just going to say, clear community input. This was not an idea or a concept they want to pursue. That's what I'm expecting to come out of them. And that's one, though, I'm like, well, don't do it yet because. If there's things that we're worried they may miss, and that's why I, I came back and said, let's do an enhanced. Just in case there's things that are missed, we'll finish this concept up in the next month, get them our feedback, and then, and I'm going to say that I said it earlier, I'll say it again. Maybe we get here on the 23rd, you see the concept, you see the feedback, and you realized they did get it. Yeah. We don't need an enhanced yeah. set of drawings. That's what design will give us. Go get them. I just don't know where you're going to get or where the community is going to get. So I'm kind of layering as many paths as possible to get us to the finish line. 
because I got to keep us in this. I got to keep it getting towards a decision. You know, I think the thing is, is that I agree with you that if Sebago has a written list of what they heard for themes that they want to share back with us, we could start from that and go, here's the written list of what they heard for themes and what do we need added to it? Well, That'd be terrific. Did but they not compile the one that we're looking? I just assumed that that was theirs because a lot of it was public. No, like they did not. Hey, no side conversations over there with the staff. No, this, you just asked the same question I was yeah. waiting to ask. I was going to ask him a minute ago because I brought it up. So I would just, which, as it pertains to Sebago, their role is to take all this information and, and have a report. And in that report, it doesn't change the concept plan, but talks about what the desires of the community are. One of the other things that they can do in that report are things that it's hard to tell without the next step, which is the big question that everybody has around. Um, right of way right and where the property lines are and where the right of way is they could suggest that some of these things need to be relooked at after after that design phase and right of ways are set so that they can they can then figure out well can we actually do this here because of this or it's going to not take as much as we thought we can actually put x y and z in there uh, it's it's kind of this is a really high level and they're going to give a suggestion on how to move forward but not necessarily uh, rewrite everything because of these comments. But th they certainly want to hear from you guys to say what what are the things you're hearing and what are the, what are the main things moving forward. So, but you talk about being the next step. So you're it doesn't seem logical that we need a three million dollar engineering design to have a sense for where's the right of way and how many trees are. So I someone had asked me how many trees how many of these mature trees will we lose. It doesn't seem like we, that should be a three million dollar study. To have a, they, an, a rough idea on to, to give a response to that, like, they, oh, we're not going to lose any, we're not going to lose any trees, or we're going to lose X trees. They did give it to you. It became questions about will I lose my tree, and they can't answer that. They gave you a general concept, and then it was, is my tree in front of my house going to be taken down? And they can say it's close. It looks like, but they're not going to tell you yes or no because you, they're going to get in front of a process where DOT's got this thoughtfully figured out on how they come in and tell you and say we got to take this tree and this is what's going to happen now. And that's the fears. We're going to end up answering every plausible concern rather than the ones that are real. And we got to get to design to know what's real and what's a concept. So this is where I had asked before. I hear you saying that by the 23rd, we will have the answer for the specific questions that can easily be answered by Sebago and staff, where you really already know the answer. People have asked, you can write the answers back for us. So the easy ones, not the complicated ones that we don't know. And quite differently from that is this whole issue of themes that have been heard that need to be addressed, because some of those themes are as simple as we don't like right in, right out on pine. That one's easy. It's option A or B. It was one of the two. I don't remember which. And so that's easy. It's going to come back on the plan that they're going to go with the option that doesn't do right in, right out. But some of the themes are more complicated than that. They're not included in option A or B right now. For example, the theme about people would like a protected bike lane that is better protected from the car lanes. There is no plan they presented us that provides that. So asking them to do that is asking for something beyond what they've brought us so far, which is again why I think this discussion as a council about some of those themes is important because if we want to say, we need you to actually do an enhanced concept with some kind of protected bike lane, we need to have that discussion as a council. We only operate as a council and we only give directions as a council. So until we have a council discussion and come up with a council list of things we would like to ask, we can't. And my concern again is just that to stay to this timeline, I think we have to have that discussion as a council at our next meeting. If we have a longer timeline, we could punt it off and wait for Sebago to first give us their first proposal and then respond. And But we're hearing we don't have the time. So although I agree, Leo, that I would love to see Sebago's first and then come up with those themes, I don't think we have the time in this timeline to do that. That's what I see. So, so let's talk about the timeline. I mean, right, that's right. yeah. Is it reasonable? I don't I mean, know. We're, this this feels like a very much of a fire drill. Yeah. The way we're going about it, and we're, when we're weeks. talking about until the next two weeks. Meeting. Yeah. I mean, I, well, for us to look through comments that we already have in front of us and to do our homework. I mean, two weeks is not. It, it's a decent amount of time. I mean, I, I can look at this tonight and come up with my themes if I really want to. Um, it's not going to take an incredible amount of time for us to be ready for a meeting to talk about what we definitely want to see in this. Right. But to say that we're going to we're going to make a decision on the 23rd about spending 300,000 short with what are going to be dozens of 
I think really important theme, unanswered questions. I don't think they're coming back with, I can't imagine they're coming back with answers to 80% of these questions. Um, and I think they're important questions. Uh, I think, you know, when you, if, you know, to, to suggest that, well, we don't know what we're taking for trees. There's got to be some kind of way to have a sense for, yeah, we might lose 30 trees or we might lose 10 trees or no, we don't think we're going to touch a tree. There's got to be some sort of love because that changes the character of the town entirely when you're coming into Orno. I, I love some of the renderings. They look really cool. But if it's barren and all the trees that are currently there, I don't love it. You know, and I think a lot of people feel that way. That's so, cool. so I think we have to have we we have to. There's going to be answers that I. I well, I'm going to be one vote, but uh, there's got to be answers that I, I think we're going to have to hear. And we may get to. I, I got to say this. We may get to that by the 23rd, and we may get so close by the 23rd that you might just say, "Let's just bring this back for the first meeting in in October with these three or four more requirements." Yeah. Bumping this to definitive time frames is what I'm trying to get us to. Yeah. This unknown, and, and we just need more, and we don't even know where we're going or where we want to end up. In order for the staff to be able to manage this with their consultants, we got to know where we want to end up. This is a timeline that can keep moving and we can keep adjusting, but at least we got something to start with. And that's kind of what we're hoping for. And truthfully, I think it's the way I hear for you. I think it's a great question. I think it's one we caught. Let's, yeah. Could they give us a guess, and that's what it would be, Absolutely. that you're going to lose... And you know we're not talking end for end because there's not many trees on the far end. And but in this, in the downtown board or the historic district, you know you might lose twenty trees. Yeah. And, and I think that, that and I'm, that's not a statement of fact. That's a hypothetical. <laughs> You're getting emails tonight. Right. Yeah, I know. Okay. 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 Mark those twenty tonight. Right. Listen to Mark those speech tonight on his way home. I think bandage. that's great. I think that's really like important because I do think that even when it's not possible to say is your specific tree going to be gone they should have an estimate of how many they think are likely to have to go in a range. And it probably depends on which plan we go with, right? There's probably less trees that are gonna be lost if we don't need a protected bike lane from the cars. And there's probably more trees that are gonna be lost if we do. That's the truth, it's a hard truth. I wish it wasn't, but I'm guessing that it's likely to be that way. And well, putting those out there clearly for the public and for us is important. I have one thing that sort of tags on what Jacob was saying. Beyond this issue of talking about themes in the public comment, I also do think that it's financially important to have a point of comparison, which is not like if we did nothing, like if we do nothing and then the sewer breaks and we have to rip up the street. For me, the point of comparison that I would like as a financial figure might be very different than others. I'm just going to say the one I would personally like is the most consistent themes I heard from the public were better crosswalks all on Main Street with push button lights and hopefully raised speed bumps. That's the biggest one I heard. The second one I heard was get the telephone poles out of the sidewalks, right? And then the third one was make better bike lanes, which could be anything from banning parking on Main Street so you don't have to zip around parked cars to creating a protected bike lane. But the first two are pretty concrete and clear. And I would like an estimate of what it costs us to just do the raised crosswalks with push buttons and speed bumps and get rid of the telephone poles and the sidewalk. Just that. So I know like that's the minimum the town seems to want. And it would be helpful to me to know what is that minimum cost. For all I know, that comes out close to three million. And then it's a pretty darn easy decision. Or maybe it's one million and then it's a harder decision. So I would like some point of contrast that is the bare minimum communities seem to want as a price point to compare to. Yeah, but so. it's hard to say what, the, what is the bare minimum of the community. I mean, it's hard to put, like you can't say town wants this, the town, it's hard, it's very it hard seems. to say, it seems, but <laughs> it's very difficult to, um, to really articulate those things. And then I don't know how you put a price, you know, truly estimate those things between now and, um, September 23rd, maybe you can, maybe you figure it out. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I think like one million, two million ballpark. Yeah. yeah. I think it's important because there is also an assumption we're making. I get it. It's this cool opportunity and I'm really excited by the opportunity. Don't get me wrong. I think it's great that there's this great opportunity to do something with the Route 2 corridor, but we also have to compare like, what is it people are trying to accomplish in the project? And if the top things cost way less than the whole project, 
that's something to at least look at before we make a financial decision in my mind. Maybe I'm the only one, but that's for me. I, I would agree with that. I, I do think we need, probably have to have further discussions about the raise. I like them. I like their, but, I, but I've heard as much negative feedback on, on you know, the, our EMS vehicles and whatnot hitting those things. So I think that's, a, that, but for sure, a theme was we need some more crosswalks. And they like the light of ones. that's a scene we, we've done. We just did four on four staff. So that seems like we know what that costs to me. That that shouldn't be a big ask. Um, poles on a sidewalk, I don't know. And I think, you know, people better bike lane, better bike lanes or, or concern over bike and pedestrian safety. That said, I, I still would like to see how that's quantified. You know, how, what's better than what? But but that's a deeper, deeper discussion, I guess. But it is, it is a theme yeah. that everyone's liking. Or everyone seemed to refer to so and really we get that design which is the whole purpose of these pro this process is to get to, to get into a design that and that's where you start to get the answers to those kinds of things to me that's not the case to me it's our job to have a back and forth between our contractors and us with us continually saying here's the themes we're hearing from our community and them continually giving us information and i don't think it's a we say nothing until the last second i just don't and I feel like it's a really big process point that in these processes coming up where there are other public meetings, I would really like it in our process commitment to the public that we don't hold public meetings unless we're gonna expect from the contractor some kind of response back that says, here's the themes we heard that we're gonna try to address. And the council always has a discussion of our own about what themes did council here. And if they don't match, we figure out why they don't match. I think it's irresponsible to the public to hold public meetings and not do both of those things after every meeting. And if it's not in our current contract, I respect that, but I want it in future contracts because I just don't like holding public meetings and then saying we heard a lot of minutia, but we made no sense of that minutia and came up with, you know, themes. Well, so I, I think mean. the best sample example of us doing that in my time on the council was the work we did when and the you know particular survey we did around the town manager search. And the, the data we got out of that from, from Sonia, she led. And I think that is, that's the aspiration whenever we hire someone to help us think through what is it, you're gonna have public meetings, you're gonna get feedback, you're gonna just, you know, if it's not, it's a very small fraction of Oriental residents participated in these public meetings and submitted comments and things like that. And people who couldn't attend, you know, so I think that is the right, the right way to kind of frame out what it is you're trying to do and the priorities you're searching for. And, you know, that wasn't how this got started. And, you know, none of us around this table were here when it started. So that's kind of a, you know, I, there's a, and I think Clint, but I do think Clint's, the process Clint has put together kind of catches us up on that. And we're gonna hear a lot from this focus, these focus groups are gonna meet eight times yeah. and they're gonna tell us a great deal about, and they're gonna be representatives in the focus. Can you just explain maybe a little bit who you think is on these focus groups, Clint, in terms of, yeah. Yeah, so I mean, and again, it was kind of the, the two parts and with what I've heard, but the focus group was to bring in, and their primary focus is to focus the community, to hear many, 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 many voices, but to keep them on task. So I think you need the community leaders that would represent, you know, that aren't going to be specific to, but maybe some abutters, maybe some people with expertise in bike pet issues that are, I mean, you've got a great wealth of knowledge here in the community to kind of put that together. And then and working with the staff, but I think it's they're more of your your parliamentarian of the focus group meetings to say let's really hone in on a topic and and get answers and questions and and figure out what we want. But that was kind of the thoughts I thought to lead in with um, council representation. I was thinking more that's more the work group yeah. group than the focus group group um, because I thought the council it would be a good opportunity for you to attend a focus group as a citizen. Yeah not as a counselor and being expected to run that. You will have your opportunities. This is give a chance for you to just kind of step back. That's the general con the so concept. You, you see someone like from kind of someone who's really affected by the, the forest Bennett kind of yep. mess, maybe a, not the, I'll pander, I do it all the time. A, you know, a business owner in you know the village who's got something to share about parking and stuff like that. So it, and how things affect traffic flow for businesses in, in the village. But that's kind of how you see it. Right? And a person probably with high community good aptitude. Yes, this is my issue, but I can now have empathy for the other person's issue and figure out where the common ground is for all of us. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's a, it's a, it's going to be a 
I mean, you got a talented group of people in your community. It's going to take some time that they can step back and realize this is big on process. Can, can we get through it? And I think it's fair. I, I would add that I think the biggest theme to the whole thing is slowing traffic down. And Orno stops just kicked off. We have a sign there that is collecting data that is probably usable. Re I mean, I don't know. Hopefully it's collected pre college being university being in session and then post that'll be different because quite honestly it's kind of getting to the point it gets to the point with the morning commute it's not really a safety issue because cars are moving they're crawling basically um but it's the rest of the time and you know i've i walked and drove biked and w with young kids on main street for about 20 years and honestly my, my biggest concern is distracted driver people with their eyes down we're not saying anything about that, but that does feed into slower traffic and slower traffic is the theme. So is a $30 million project going to be what is going to slow the traffic down or is what we're doing with Orono stops, maybe creating reputation. And again, if we're, if we're, the data tells us right now that 90% of the cars cresting that hill are doing 35, then we know we have a problem that is solved through enforcement. Right. You enforce that for a couple of weeks, whether it's warnings and then tickets or whatever warnings first, but you enforce it. The reputation is there. I've said it before, we've all from 40 years ago. I don't speed through BZ as a rule. And that's in my I've never been pulled over there. It's just in my head that they're bad there and they're, they're not bad. They're just, <laughs> pull you over. So, yeah, no yeah. Doubt. But yeah. so, I mean, I think I don't want us to simplify this either to just slowing down traffic. I mean, a huge theme, it, if you know, we're picking through these, uh, is also bikeability. I mean, trying to incentivize alternative forms of transportation, more like climate-friendly transportation, as well as just, I mean, I'm a biker, um, and there are spots of this that are really challenging to bike through. I mean, I have to get up on the sidewalk, and then sometimes I'm like in the way of somebody else, and I have to figure out how to get back off of there. Um, trying to create more sensible bike lanes in whatever way that makes sense all across this route um, is, it seems to me, I mean, reading these, that's also a, a you know, big priority. Mentioned again and again. Agreed. And, and I think we heard a lot there. We have two schools of thought on the, on the rotaries. Like, sure. Somebody with a like kid a doesn't want their kid in that, in this mixed traffic. And I, so uh, agreed that, that, that is, that is also a theme, but again, the hard, hardest part of Main Street is people parking in the street, right? And we've got nice bike lanes on, on all of Main Street. The bridge is an issue yeah. and parking is an issue. Yeah, I don't, I'm just saying, I mean, I think I do want to see us come into, uh, well, I want to send our concerns in a way that we can all look at together and then come into the ninth meeting, coalescing around what we really definitely, as a council, see here, um, to help focus this process and initially, um, while also knowing that, I mean, as a concept, I mean, as, as a design actually gets going, I mean, we're going to have a ton of feedback too to help guide this. I mean, I, I'm interested in seeing this go forward, but I definitely want us to have this meeting uh, on the 9th so that we can give as much directed focus as we can. I, I would like to understand as far as we keep saying we're going to have all this feedback and, and there's two spots where there are public public input. Um, we just had a meeting with public input. Um, and, and for a minute, it seemed like there was not going to be any impact on the design. I don't know from this, you know, a meeting to have public input. I, I don't know that still, if, if, there, if we spent $3 million in engineering, does 20 people saying, I don't want a rotary here, or I don't want right-handed, does that overcome $3 million worth of engineering? I don't know. I don't know that it does. So there'll be an input, but, I, but what they do with the input is, is the most important thing. And I'm, I don't know how that works. Yeah. I mean, we've got, I mean, it's not like a design comes and then we have all this, these focus groups. I mean, that's not really what the process looks like here. Uh, yeah, it's this one. Is it correct, Clint, that um, this Talia's, is the state's method? Right. To Leo's question on the line, the outline you gave us of a schedule down in the yellow section, and maybe there's one sooner I missed, but I see one in the yellow section mm -hmm. that says specifically council sends a letter outlining takeaways from informational meetings. So I think you are trying to build in, Clint, the expectation that after every informational meeting, 
Council has follow-up work to do to communicate back to whoever that is at that point, MDOT, yep. right? And I understand MDOT has authority. And also we have to get through a public hearing and we have to approve our eventual 3 million part of the project. So I would assume they care when we say, we clearly hear that our community isn't gonna like it if you don't do this. So please do it because otherwise we may not be able to pass this. They must care once, I mean, or is it true that they could get to the end and say, we don't want your 3 million. We're just gonna go forward on our own. They can't, right? They have to have a match from us, right? I don't say never and speak in confidence <laughs> when it comes to them, but I find it very highly unlikely care. that without our 3 million, they're gonna implement yeah. a design project of this nature. They're just gonna say, all right, goes on the shelf. There's tons That's of them right. down there that they have. Someday it'll be ready to go and then they'll redo the estimate. And yeah, the community will comment will be why is it now six million and not three million? It's like, well, it's been 15 years and, and this paving group, costs are up. And this, uh, let's see what happens. Sort of built in that you're trying to build it and maybe there can be one after both informational meetings. I only see one. Maybe there can be one after wherever the second informational uh, okay. meeting is. But. Oh, there's an optional second. Yeah, they and I did that because their second one says that yeah. depending on how things go in there, they're they're they're, they're, they're they were concerned that. It may or may not need so the additional. Process-wise, Clint, I think they're needed after what are called public meetings on there, not what are called informational meetings. Yep. Because they say after the public meetings, that's where they're looking for input. So I, I guess just we should look at the timeline because I believe it's after the public yep. meetings when we need to do those things. And I just want to say that I really appreciate our yep. focus on process tonight and really trying to build a robust process going forward to be sure yep. that community input when given is taken absolutely seriously and uh, you know responded to by council as fully as possible that it's not i know as a community member in other communities i've gone to public meetings and i've said things and it's been clear to me that they were a farce that the public meeting was just there so they could claim it happened and there was no response back and i really appreciate anorano that we don't do that we're not doing that we're looking at this and trying to be sure that there is a responsiveness to this public input, and I really appreciate this process building to accomplish that. So thank you. We're going to have to talk with Clint about how we resource that end of it, too, because that's hard work, you know, and we're um, in terms of communication and, you know, we'll have conversations about communication matters and but how, you know, we, you're going to have to come back to us and say, you know, the council wants to, you know, wants this at these critical junctures to have feedback to the community about what was heard and, and they listened and this is how it how it impacted the process. So you're gonna have to let us know. Yeah, you wrote three times now in here and it's not a survey, but there's gotta be some sort of public input yep. component that is survey asked. Yep. Where I, people I, can actually be posed with the information yep. and give a response, yes, no, different. I did, um, I did, um, Suggest that we welcome some input from folks who attended the meeting with us tonight, um, and then I think we'll kind of put a bow on what we're heard and what we're asking the, the manager to do. So, does then does anyone have anything else to add? We want to join the conversation briefly. Okay, great. Nope, nope. We're gonna. Sure, can you introduce yourself, please? My name is Mike Griffin. And I've uh, lived or worked in out of Arnold for seventy years. Um, what worries me about what I heard tonight is the guy seems to be cast. We must accept this concept or we will be deprived of the gift that has been given to you. That's dangerous. What disturbs me here is a concept that has full of roundabouts. Roundabouts. So you've already got two. Got a carnival bump bar up in Park Street. We have one, of course, on Forest Avenue and still one. Think of the town, think of the town and the vision of the town. Three roundabouts. What are we trying to do? Get the Guinness Book of Records for the most roundabouts any small town can have? What do we, what's the vision? What are the vision? What do we look at when we look at the ancient pictures of the town? Well, we want the town to be. Do we just simply need crosswalks, some buttons to slow us down and preserve the town as it is historically then? Must we rush to get money, but we destroy the community, our vision of our town? Thank you, Mike. Okay, anyone in briefly? 
Uh, again, again, what Caroline said was very uh, important. Now, this week, I'm actually going to walk with James Dubay. He's going to walk and show his pens, his markers, where he is thinking that he will have difficulty with. So I haven't walked that with him, so I can't really say this meeting is important to express that. I'm also going to have a friend uh, join us as well. So there'll be several people there uh, walking it with him. So what is he going to say? And, uh, and, uh, you know, we can make assumptions. And, uh, my, my, my concern is that, um, is this the last public comment for your meetings, or this is just associated with the first meeting? I'm kind of slightly confused. We're talking about a topic and uh, because we're somewhat informal and we have these committee discussions, we ask, we invite people who have something they want to share to oftentimes participate in the, in the discussion. There'll be another formal public comment period at the end or something that hasn't been, you know, can't be repetitive. We're not going to talk about the thing you talked about at the first part of the meeting. But if you have another topic that you want to share that's not on our agenda, that would be an opportunity for that. Well, uh, thank you very much. Sure. But where this is all related to this uh, highway, I mean, just sort of commerce, uh, Route 2. Um, again, the input from James uh, Dubé, which is a major landowner along this way. Yep. And uh, I think it's very relevant to each three present, and it can't be it's such as the nature of his life at this yep. time. He's not here. We're here every other Monday night, we you know we post our agendas. Come here on the ninth, and I mean, if, you, if there's information from that discussion, I think it would be helpful to come in on the ninth when we're talking about well, it. The critical nature of this timeline, which we were just discussing, it's very important, Mr. Griffin. Excellent points, and you know the very nature of our community. You know these turn circles, they're from a foreign entity, and so in other words, if you look at the comp plan plans that come out of the UN and Agenda 21, now 2030, turn circles are uh, their cup. They love those. And they, they actually go forward to implement them. Oh, sure, we're going to do this. We're going to hold a badge on our chest saying, that a boy and destroy our community. Mike has a good point. We heard him. Griffin yeah. has a yeah. great point. Where yeah. is the pleasure of the community? In our bike lanes, we're making bike lanes, you know, and all this other stuff. It's a foreign group of people. I think Orono compromise is a time constraint. Very, very good point. Okay. Thank you. The time constraint is an issue. It's a fish hook. What is behind all of it? Thank you. All right. So I think it, do we have somebody else? I'm sorry. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. It's my first meeting. So yeah. okay, what's your name? And Fonzo Grossbush. And uh, I, in coming here for the first time, I felt very much like this was going to be a very rushed thing through by this 23rd and everything. And I also thought that if you really talk to the people in the town of Arno, how many really want this? And I don't, but that's beside the point. Uh, I think that what Mike said is very strong, and I think that it shouldn't be rushed through. I think it should be more of the people knowing what's going on and having a say in it. Do they really want it? I have, I'm far as Avenue, so I go up with the traffic. I'm, I'm also with the rotary there, and I go through the other rotary a lot, and I think that we have enough room, to be honest. But I think that it should be discussed a lot more and not pushed through. Okay, thank you. So in terms of just getting to the point where we're gonna have feedback from the, the council and um, put what, I heard tonight is we're going to get get you some ideas before by next Tuesday morning, so a week from tomorrow morning. Uh, themes that we've heard, themes we want we want to talk about at our meeting on Monday, September 9th. At the end, of, so we'll put that at the end of the meeting, and then um, we will have. I think when we get to that point, I would like this. This will be on our agenda at on the Monday, September 23rd meeting. Um, and whether we whether we act then or not is going to depend a lot on what how much work gets done in the month. Yep. But I'd like to keep it on, you know, as a pencil on that calendar, that agenda, 
and then it, and then we'll have to decide as a council whether we're ready on the 23rd to act. I would very much like to be in a position where everyone's comfortable acting. Um, and if you know we have to take a little more time, if we think we can get more people on with a little more time, I'm definitely <clears> open to that. And I would I'd move I'd be the one to move to table it if I if it's clear that you know, but I think that um I like the idea of a month from now, us from now, given the um we have a chance to have a resolution in front of us. We work towards that. And if we need a little more time, we'll take it. But let's not say, you know, after Thanksgiving or anything like that. Let's keep, I think that's what we that's my sense of where we, we where we want to go. And we'll all have a chance to, you know, weigh in more and hopefully go on a little bit. Matt, you didn't you all right? Yeah, I'm good. Okay. I, one question only just in response to sure. some of the public comment. I, and I think maybe the answer is no, but I just want to ask. So I know there'll be lots of chances for more community input in this plan when we get to the focus group stage and there'll be more public meetings happening. Is there any chance for more community input in these next two weeks before we meet again? Assuredly, community members can still email in sure. their thoughts about the plan. Um, I know, Clint, you mentioned there being eventually some survey with specific questions to people. I doubt that's happening in the next two weeks, but it would be out there after that. And in these two weeks, we can just encourage the public to take a look at the information presented by Sebago at our last and DOT at our, what date was that? Does anyone know? It's on the website. July 25th. Yeah. That and to send your emails in and keep sending these comments because it's very, very important that members of the community are here and the more the better expressing your thoughts and opinions and needs and wants yeah. on this project. And I would say this. I think someone else might um, want to speak. Yeah, sure. Go ahead, sir. Thank you. Where would we send those comments in? Is a route two. Route two, yep. yeah, route two project at Orno. Can you say that louder, Mitch? Route two project at orno.org. Oh, and it's on the website. And there's, website oh, yeah. and there's also a general yeah. comment site on the yeah. website that if you made a route two comment. RT or ROE? Yeah. And honestly, if someone didn't get that and they sent any comment to any town counselor or the yeah. town manager, we will forward it and they will add it to that file. So if you get it to any town staff or counselor, we will direct it there. And I, I too, for people who have specific, we have, there's a lot, you know, we're not looking to set any records on round. I heard them called roundies in an email that we got today. And I thought it was very, um, <laughs> Boundaries. I, I, I thought it was. I it was a good comment, and I like the term. I thought it was, but yeah, we're not. Nothing's been decided yet. We've got this is, and I, you know, I don't think we've done a good job of communicating just that yet, and we need to. But there's a lot of work. Truly, there's a lot yet to be determined. Yep. Um, so, on the on that twenty third meeting, how can we offer a thirty minute block? Because a lot of people showed up for that public hearing yep. and we've got a spreadsheet with a lot of comments they're gonna be boiled down by us on the ninth somewhat and then they're going to be boiled down by Sebago and presented on that on that date not on the 23rd necessarily right uh, when we leave the ninth I would give them to Sebago but this part of the enhance it's part of a trying to get to another concept because we need to see it to understand it kind of model. We've got to finish what we're on, get all those answers, then take that to another step additional. That's what the timeline. Oh. But, but on the 23rd, then we're, we're not going to hit. We're not going to hear from Sebago. Correct. Is that what you're saying? I was not expecting them to present. It's on the 23rd, initial Sebago concept is shared. Yes, it's a draft report. Okay, but will we have a draft report, not with their presentation, but a draft report or the one we've already have, saw? They or? owe us a written report. That I asked them not to finish it because we're still talking about what we want them to do. So my hopes is that this week I'm going to tell them where the process we're kind of going on, knowing where we need to be by the 23rd, which is they need to wait till the 9th to hear our themes. And then by the 23rd, I want to see if they can finish that first concept. Meanwhile, I also want to talk to them what is it going to cost or take to do an enhanced concept? Because we need more information still. And that's why I'm thinking is where we're headed. And that's going to be more money that we would have to figure out how to fund. And hopefully so we, through ARPA and something, we who knows what's happening with all our projects, but we can find it. But we're making more decisions to get better information 
and better information is going to have some costs. So we down. hope that there'll be a written draft report by the 23rd, we hope, right. but there will not be a formal presentation on the 23rd. No. I'm clear, thank you. So I mean, <clears throat> so we're gonna have a written present- Written report. Written report and be asked to make a decision to spend the 300,000 to move forward. And there's really not an opportunity for the public that did participate to, to have any true dialogue with yeah, the date. No, that's the timeline. Right? You need more time with the timeline. Take a look at the timeline. Yeah. After the 23rd, it kicks off an eight work week period where we've made a commitment to $300,000, but we're not gonna let them go forward and do any design till we come back with an enhanced report taking that concept to another stage. And if they, if we don't like it, you get another pullout point right there. But again, we're buying a lot of time using all of our ability to work, not in a sense to rush it, but again, to also understand that we're in about month 18 of when this project originally kicked off. And you may not have had the best process to this date, but there's been a lot of work done to get us to here. And they have timelines and objectives and goals that they have to meet to the taxpayers in the state of Maine and the federal government as a whole. So we got to tell them if we're in on this project or not, not in a sense to rush it or change it, but in a sense to keep the process moving. As long as we're moving, I think they're with us. If we're stalling, which I'm trying to prevent us from looking like. So commit 300,000 to keep moving, but, we're, but we've committed that. That, mean, that, means the, that means we're committed to the engineering, which is a $3 million project. And what I'm telling you is in that eight weeks, they're not going to hire a firm start their work and do anything. They'll get all the things done. It's gonna take them a lot of time. I'm leveraging that we're ready to go. We're gonna get our stuff done. You know, we're gonna get more stuff done. And they now know that that may mean we get, oh, oh, we're reversing our decision. But again, reverse of the decision is council rules. Someone who voted in the majority is gonna to have to change their mind to make that motion to change your mind. That's why you have the rules you have. This isn't another chance for, okay, the four of us that do want it and the three that don't, I, we're gonna talk it out again, we're still gonna get to a four three vote. You're instituting your processes because I'm hoping to show that the town is continuing to further the project. We can't get answers to the what ifs of if we don't commit, what happens? Where will we win? How much time do we have? They're not, gonna an they're not answering them. Not because they don't want to. There's so many other projects in the queue, they're waiting for the project people all these other 15 towns to come to them and say, we're ready to keep going. Let's check up. I, I will. So I, I just want to be careful about, you know, saying that you know, we're rushing this process or yes, um, there are some deadlines. However, um, we started with the public meeting back last spring that I participated in before I was even on the council yeah. Yeah. about what we wanted to see. We also talked about this project during the, budget process and then Sebago presented it to the council and we had a public meeting. So I guess I, I, we are, I don't believe we are rushing this through. There have been opportunities. And multiple plans before that. Yes. The, the foundation for the plan. So yes. There's a lot are. more work to be done, but for this, this didn't happen overnight. Yeah. And we're working hard to create awareness and ask for input now. And it, it may seem like for people who haven't been involved, it may seem like it's to be fair. The two concepts were first presented what date to the public? February. Did these two concepts? Oh, no. the two. Ah. No. We had the yeah. first presentation in February. There was a concept in February, right? No. No, there was yeah. an idea and the public okay. gave it. We were they set us down as workshop to figure yeah. out what we wanted it to look like. Okay. Said wow. that. Right? So the first concepts were just presented at this meeting. Well, the concepts are what's going to be built. I mean, their concepts are of this kind of design. There's nothing, as I as I understand it, the concepts don't go to DOT and they just say just design this precisely for what we have. It's right, but they've been presented with a lot of questions, so it, that's why it feels to me like we're rushing it and we'd be putting the carpet for the horse to say, oh yeah, yeah, we're you know here's our ten percent, we're in. You know now tell us the answers to our questions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That, that, is a, that seems like a completely backward process. And I don't hear that from Clint. I hear that we're going to try to get answers to as many of those questions as possible before the 23rd. I agree with you, Leo, that in an ideal world, I would like the enhanced concept done. 
before we had to make the decision on the 300,000. I'm just not sure we're in the ideal world right now. And we have to look at that on the 23rd. I'm not sure, I may be totally with you on the 23rd that I'd rather delay this decision. I'm very curious to see what themes we come up with as a council. I'm very curious to see what the Sebago plan comes back stating. Um, and from there, I've heard clearly from Clint and from Dan and from staff that on the 23rd, we can vote on the resolution or say, no, we're not ready to vote. We need to see X or Y or Z before we take that vote, correct? Yeah, yep. thanks. Okay, ready to move on? Dan, we're gonna move on. What's that? I wish to say a point of order. I don't know that you have standing to say a point of order in our meeting. Well, it's a question. All right, you can ask a quick question. Andy Perkins, eighth of a mile. What? And Andy Perkins has an eighth of a mile unproved road. The engineering cost for that unproved road to become an improved road, $100,000. What's the length out here? Okay. Okay, that was a point. That, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. That's fiscally important. Okay. We have a manager update still, right? Thank you. Yep, we've got a lot to do okay. still. So, okay. Clint, you all set with this? Yeah. Thank you. And thank you for all the work. Yep. Um, next item on our agenda is town manager update. Um, Let's, so let's hear from the town manager. Uh, some of these are, we're going to be very short and sweet. The graduate students fair is on 829, and that kind of ties into the Orno stop, but we've got some staff going over there that's going to be involved, and the Orno stops will be one of the things that they bring with them as well, but just wanted to share that's going on for the UMaine Orno graduate students fair. Pickleball, we've already done it, so we can skip. I didn't know if it was going to hit, so we left it in two places just in case. Um, the Orno stops press event. Media advisory and stuff happened this morning, this afternoon, 1230. Very well attended. We're probably all been on the news by now. Um, so we'll see it maybe at the uh, the later later hour or first thing in the morning. But again, I was generally very pleased and wanted to share that I think the staff came together very well. Great community up kind of spirit to it. And uh, it was nice to see a big bus and a police cruiser sitting out there just kind of <laughs> Presenting the whole topic. We had every community. bus driver in the region yeah. there. We had a lot of parents. We had people from the school staff. I really appreciate. Yeah. Yep. And the uh, youngest, maybe volunteer uh, police officer, perhaps ever in Orono. We do right? have an opening, right, Dan? We can, you know, don't look any further than the town of Orono for that young man that was there today. Oh, in the horn the whole time. Um, yeah. This one, notice on contracted ALS support services. We have an contract that says we if we have mutual aid agreements we have a rate but your piece schedule says there's a rate that we have to provide ALS services to businesses that are in neighboring communities or if a community is contracted with a business um, that rate was not being used mm -hmm. um, we reviewed it and we sent a letter notifying them that they that the new rate takes effect in a month and it's a significant increase, but we were undercharging. It wasn't an issue where we're increasing the rate. The ALS is for those who- Advanced do. life support. So if they, what happens if they don't have the right certification on their ambulance when they get to a certain line where they have jurisdiction, someone with that has to meet them and escort them. And Orno has been doing this. Other communities have been dropping some of these organizations. We're continuing to help, but we reviewed the fee schedule and said, no, this council adopted this fee and that's what you're supposed to be paying. So just wanted to update you if you hear about it. It's so just, we're gonna raise the rates for what we did. Same thing, probably going up. Is that what you the rate is going to the higher rate? Yes, it's yeah, it was around a hundred dollars uh um flat hundred hundred and fifty dollar flat fee, it's now five hundred. Which is the rate that we are paid or pay out. I'm That's we to charge them to give them support. Yeah. And so we're going to increase that our revenues and we'll yeah. see what happens with that. And it's more market sensible. That's what other agreed. Yeah, so we're just letting you know. Yep. Um, skip the, uh, sewer rate discussion got moved to 9-9, you know that. Um, the council has a, there's, again, I'm learning this, but there is a requirement to notify. There's also a requirement to accept, but with acceptance of a grant, that's usually an, a vote. The, I just wanted to let you know the police department is pursuing a grant um, through the Bureau of Highway Safety. It, they will see, we may or may not get it. Um, the match will be determined more closely and it could have as much as a 20% match, but some of that may be already in the budget. So it's match that's already allocated, but you will get to approve that later. But I just want to make you aware as we pursue grants here and there, this is one that they've queued up and they will be applying for. Um, and this is kind of how I'll probably announce them and share them. That way you're not making a vote to get a go after a grant that we haven't even got yet. 
Yeah. I didn't quite understand that step. And it didn't say that you had to, it just said you had to be notified. Yeah. So this is the notification step. Um, and then the last, uh, property tax commitment. Bills will be going out soon. Um, this could be an entire workshop every year to talk about how commitments work and what we do. Um, we're working with staff to get more information out for the community. Um, mill rate is dropping. That's going out in the letter to the, to the tax bills, to the citizens. But again, there was across the board increases as well as a lot of new value came into the town. Some new properties right here, very large investments, uh, hotel, uh, private sector business on the other side of the river. You know, they all came in, those change your values. So um, some people, as is the case just about any year, are going to see their bill go out. Some may see it slightly down because the mill rate dropped and some will see it pretty much the same. Um, so you kind of get that net effect across the board. But um, you will see a lower mill rate, but the lower mill rate, again, that just makes it equitable. The mill rate doesn't set your tax bill and make sure you're equal. We are raising more money through taxes this year than we did last year to support school, county, and town. And our valuation is up a lot. So that's what led to the lower mill rate. How much lower did you say the mill rate is? Dropped down to 21.35, if I'm remembering right off the top of my head. Yeah. Which was down from 23 oh, something. 23.80. Yeah, so down significantly yeah, so down on the mill rate. Yeah, big drop. But again, so there was some cross the board valuation changes. Um, I mean, talk to the assessor. He saw values in the 70% variance sale to assess value. Um, we were getting a low under the 90% threshold the state has in their requirements. We had to make some adjustments to, to stay there. But again, overall, yes, some people will see higher tax bills, but nothing's to do with how we did it. It's based upon your budget and the value of the town that we set. I do think a workshop to kind of walk us through that at some point makes, makes some sense. And um, So I don't want to be celebrating the fact that people on fixed incomes are paying more because they live next to you know, yep. you know, comps that have gone up, and I'm happy to celebrate how tech and hotels coming out of the on yep. the tax base. Um, so it's kind of a tough. Thing. Yep, and we can go over that and talk about the different ways yeah. we can do it and what the ins and outs because there is a lot more to it than just yeah. Mill rate went down, the mill rate went up. That's yeah, we had not even the beginning of the conversation. Not getting the tax cut necessarily. Yeah. So yeah. that's <laughs> excellent. Okay, that's it. All right. The next, thank you. That's very. Well then, um, next item that we added an item. I see that Amanda is not here to help remind me what we yeah. decided, but um, we added an item to feature items and items of concern. Does any member of the council have a feature item or item of concern they'd like to discuss? Yep, good. Uh, we'll close that piece out. And I think the last piece that we have with the public, we are gonna come back in after our executive session probably to act. So um, if, if it's important to you to see us act on an item coming out of executive session, stick around. Uh, but we do have a public comment, a final public comment. It can be on an item that hasn't been discussed already in today's meeting. Dan. Um, and you're limited to five minutes or less, please. Yeah, thank you. Yep. Last year on uh, uh, Tuesday, November 12th, 2023, I mentioned about a $75,000 um, fine that had been levied on my family on, on the property. And the collection was $100 a month. And it was asked to then the town manager of their consent. See, the thing is, is it was a winnable issue that came out of the court case. The town was supposed to collect this and then distribute it to the other parties to acknowledge that it's never happened. Leanne is out there. This is an issue. And I wish to open up discussion on that if you please find out where that is and um while i did mention uh previously that i had reasonable cause to open a discussion a little concerned because i'm fuzzy about this out of council meeting if two counselors meet that's not an appropriate thing is that right Three, three, three. Yeah, two of us can meet, and oh, okay. three of us meet. Three and then, of us can meet if we're noticed. Yeah, if we're yeah, noticed. Can meet yeah. if it's a noticed oh, meeting. Excellent. Yeah. Uh, excellent. So, if you would get back to me as to who to talk to, what the protocol, how how to do this to open up that discussion, I would be very much appreciated. Are you asking for a meeting with counselors? Yeah. Okay. That would be appreciated. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, so again. 
think you guys are doing a good job, but there is another part to this. There's, there's this, the finish of this. The executive meeting doesn't have the other regular town components in here, the agenda. This is the this is the time to discuss those issues. Is that right? I'm not sure what you're asking. Can you public comment. Yeah, we're in public comment now. Yes. Yep. Second time, and this is a time to talk about an item that hasn't hasn't been discussed previously. So, I think I I think I covered those points. Yep. Uh, quite well, and uh, so I'm looking forward to having an open conversation. Okay. Thank when you. we get, make sure we have Clint has your contact information so we can arrange to. Um, I'd certainly be happy to meet with you um, outside of a meeting to talk about your concerns and um, the better understand. It's hard Thank to you. it's hard to follow it in this. I'll be friend, I'll be honest. It's hard for me to follow in this in this I type mean, of setting. But I'm, I am not without a little bit of complication. I know. <laughs> <laughs> That's what makes yeah yeah I like I like that. Okay, is there any other public comment in the room this evening? Thank you for turning it out. It's been, I uh, appreciate you having you here. And Pete, do we have any hands raised? Not at this time. Okay, please stay tuned. We have a lot more work to do. So thank you. Um, all right, and at this point, I will entertain a motion to move into- Second. Move into second to move. Well, I mean, I gotta- We're going to executive session. No, we're going to executive session pursuant to one MRSA section 40560 to discuss collective bargaining with AFSCME Council 93. I have a move, a motion, and a second, and I've read it out loud, so I feel like we, you know, um, Council Bertzel. In favor. Council Baker. Yes. Council Lowry. In favor. Council Demerits in favor. Council Marks. In favor. Council Powers. In favor. Council Kenny. In favor. Okay, we're going into executive session. We will be coming out of executive session to act, so we'll have to, we'll be back on the Zoom, right, Mitch? And Sonia, we'll call you again um, from the, the conference room. Sounds great. Let me go grab my phone. Thanks for coming, everybody. Executive session. Thank you. We've declared the executive session over, and uh, we have Council Bertha Soul still with us on the phone. Yes. So um, with that, I would entertain a motion on order 24171, an order taking order 24161. Off so moved, Sonia. Seconded. Moved and seconded. Uh, Councilor Berthesel, are you in favor? I sure am. Councilor Baker? Yep. Councilor Larway? In favor. Councilor Demerits in favor. Councilor Marks? In favor. Councilor Powers? Councilor Kenny? In favor. Okay. Now we, ha uh, we have before us an order 24161, order authorizing the town council chair and town manager to execute a collective bargaining agreement with AFSCME Council 93. Uh, could we have a motion? Motion. Who? Second. Couldn't you write it down, right? Jacob and Matt. Okay. Yep. And count, any discussion? Council Berthesel? In favor. Council Baker? Yep. Council Larway? In favor. Council Demerits? In favor. Council Marks? In favor. Council Powers? In favor. Council Kenny? In favor. That uh, passed unanimously, as did our uh, previous. Order taking the order off the table. Um, and with that, we are now at um, adjourn. I'll take a motion to adjourn. Motion. Move. Second. Seconded. Council Bertzel. Yeah. Councilor uh, Baker. Yep. Council Larway. <laughs> Council Demaris in favor. Council Marks. In favor. <laughs> Council no. Kenny. No. Six to one vote with Council. <laughs> We're going to go seven to zero on that. Thank you, everybody, seven for staying zero. with us. Thanks, so. Yeah. Adjourn.